Hey guys, Bill coming back at you again with another video and today we're going to check out the three pink kush done three different ways and the ones indoors are now four weeks into flower. Alright, so first off, let's go take a look outside while it's still nice out and uh, we'll check out the one out there. Alright, so we have the pink kush outdoors. Uh, doing really good. You can see it's grown quite a lot this week. Uh, we've had lots of sun and also some rain mixed in. So it's had pretty good growing conditions this week. And uh, sure enough, she did grow quite a bit. And she's definitely widened out. And she's also gotten probably close to a foot taller. So really nice. Uh, now let's check it out here. Uh, it looks really healthy. Not seeing any type of pest, but I'm still getting the dead flies under the uh, under the leaf. Uh, so we have a few of them here. I took off a bunch last week. Here's a couple of them on there. And uh, so last week I showed it, and one of my viewers he put down this name. So I looked it up, and uh, it sounds just like what it is. It's a, a type of fungus called Endomorthria. Muscae. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced that right. It's one of those like Latin type words. Anyway, uh, it's also known as the fly killer uh, and the zombie fungus. And it's really interesting. I, I read a bunch about it. And uh, I guess what happens is these flies come in contact with a type of fungus and it penetrates the fly's body. And starts taking over and, and uh, somehow takes over a part of their brain which kind of makes them become erratic uh, then they find a place to land and they tend to crawl upwards which is why most of these flies uh, they tend to be on the very tips of the leaves on these and then they cause the fly to secrete this sticky substance which sticks them to the leaf itself and uh, then they open their wings and they die and what happens is the fungus will start to uh, create spores on the outside of the fly's bodies, which kind of launch off into space and try to land on another fly. And the same thing happens, and uh, that's how they reproduce. Anyway, very interesting, kind of creepy, but uh, supposedly it is not harmful to humans at all. So I don't think... Um, I don't think they're going to hurt the plant at all either because I think by the time this goes into harvest, the conditions won't be right for the, the fungus to continue to live. So uh, it should be done long before that. Anyway, I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about what I found out about it because, uh, yeah, I was I was scratching my head. So uh, thanks to the uh, viewer that pointed that out to me. And, uh, yeah, plant's doing fantastic. I can't complain about it at all now last week we did a lollipop down on the bottom uh, brought it up almost about a foot now I'm gonna put in a picture here of uh, the freak show last year right around this time I think it's a week ahead of this one actually I couldn't find any actual photos in my album so I had to take a screenshot from one of the videos and uh, this is what the freak show looked like. Uh, it's definitely taller, but it's also a foot off the ground in a pot. So we have to take that into consideration. And uh, not near as wide and full and bushy as this one. Yeah, I think this is going to be huge. And uh, I don't think uh, little Max there, I don't think Max is bothering the plant at all anymore. How are you, Max? Huh? You leaving daddy's plant alone? Yeah. Just gonna go behind the shed where it's a little bit cooler back there in the shade so I think I will probably bring my scrog net out and uh, I'll set it up here on this uh, on the frame that I have set up here just to have it ready and uh, we'll start scrogging her out here in another week or two there's a look at the outside pink kush so let's go back inside all right so here we have in the three by three tent from mars hydro under the mars hydro fce 3000 we have another one of the pink kush now this one is more sativa dominant than the other two and uh really doing quite well uh, four weeks into flower now and uh, i did clean off underneath a little bit we had lolly popped a few weeks back uh up to right about where that bar is hitting and then I just cleaned up above that a few days ago just to clean it out a little bit more uh, take out any really tiny bud sites and there was a lot of those and a lot of uh, 
a lot of wilty leaves which this plant has been known for since it was germinated uh, but it's doing much better since I flipped a flower uh, a lot of the leaves are nice and healthy but it still has some sort of issue uh, with just a little bit of curl in the leaves and the branches are still fairly weak so that's why I put it in this web grow unit which has spaces to feed each one of the buds through that will help it out once these buds get a little bit of weight and where the branches are a little bit thinner a little weaker that should help keep everything in place so uh, but overall I think she's doing really good I as I've said in every video since I started with this girl I was going to throw this out when it was first germinated because it just looked so sickly and then once I realized the, the different characteristics of the leaves leaning more towards the sativa looking side of the hybrid, I really did want to grow it out just to see. And it's really doing quite well. Uh, you can see it's stacked up really nice. And we got lots and lots of buds here, tons of buds. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super impressed with this one and really glad I didn't throw it out. And of course this one as well as the one in the big tent are being fed Green Planet a three part nutrient series uh, using the recommended dosage on the bottle for bloom and I'm feeding to run off one day and then I'm feeding with just pH tap water the next day without runoff. Uh, I find that's been working really well and uh, yeah super impressed with it so far. Now it is really muggy and hot here. Uh, most days lately in the last week, it's been up to close to 30 degrees, over 30 degrees outdoors some days. But uh, I've been with two air conditioners going, uh, I've been able to keep it below 30 in here. And the big tent gets pretty close to 30. I wish it was just a little bit cooler than that because I do have these plants in my living area. I don't have a special room or anything. This is, this is just off of my front door is right here and my living room is right here so i find the best way to regulate the temperatures in here is just to regulate them in the house so there is number two for the pink kush the sativa dominant one so let's go over to the eight by eight and we'll check on the third one in there and last but not least we have the pink kush in the eight by eight and it is running under the mars hydro smart fc 6500 uh, which is controlled with my app on my phone and it works amazing. Uh, we also have some side light here. We have the Mars Hydro FCE 4800, uh, which we have down on the side of the plant just to give it a little extra light penetration on the sides. And uh, where we have this on a turntable, we can turn that around and get the other side. So I do come in, turn this multiple times a day and uh, it I think it really is helping a lot down on the sides of these buds here uh, which would normally not get much light and also on the sides of these taller buds here which are usually shaded by the fan leaves on top uh, now they're be now they're able to get direct light directly from the sides. now I can't say for sure how much uh, better it is to have the side light as opposed to not having the side light but I do think it is helping now we can see here uh, being four weeks into flower, we can see the buds are starting to bulk up a little bit. Stacked so nice, just like the one in the 3x3. Three three. And uh, we're also getting, if we zoom in here, we're also getting lots of trichome production going on. So really like that. I think we're going to get some decent buds out of here. So the plan was last week to clean this out. Obviously, it didn't get cleaned out. It still needs a clean out. Uh, the reason I didn't do that was because I oversprayed with some uh, miticide fungicide as prevention. Uh, I mixed it a little bit too strong and we did end up getting some burn and a little bit of curl on some of the top leaves here. So I wanted to give it another week to uh, just recover from that before I cleaned it out. Plan B was to clean it out this week. Well, unfortunately, we had another issue pop up. Now, anybody that remembers a uh, few months ago when I had the AK-47s, I had a problem with mites, two spotted spider mites. Uh, I sprayed the heck out of those with Dr. Zymes, and even though that kind of kept them at bay a little bit, it didn't totally fix the problem. But after I harvested, they were also in a different tent. 
Uh, after I harvested them, I cleaned out that tent, used a UVC light, wiped everything down, and I haven't been in that tent since. That was a couple of months ago. Uh, and now I thought I had them gone at that point. Now, there's no sign of mites in the 3x3 tent, and there was no mite activity on this plant, all through veg, even into flower. Well, even though I had sprayed as a preventative measure after last week's video, uh, I looked and sure enough, I seen the signature marks of spider mites. Uh, let's see if I can find some here. Now there's not a lot, not a ton, but there is some right here. Right there. You can see the spots there. That's where the mites have been feeding on the underside there. So sure enough, as soon as you see those, you know what it is. It's spider mites. So I see some there. Uh, like I said, there's not a lot. I think I see some. If I zoom in there on that leaf, I see some. Now I don't see much on the leaves around it, but there are some there, some there, and I'm sure there's more throughout the plant. So I've decided that's it. I got to get rid of these things. I'm not going to spray anymore. I don't like to spray in flower anyway. So what I did was I contacted, uh, there's a company out west, Vancouver, I believe, uh, in Canada here that's called the Bug Lady. So I contacted them, said, this is my problem. I need to get rid of these once and for all. So once I told her the situation and told her what I had sprayed and when I had sprayed it and when would be a safe time to introduce some predator mites. So they helped out a lot. They knew exactly what I needed and they sent off a package yesterday. It was in Halifax early this morning, so it should be here either today or tomorrow at the latest. Now I have three different types of predator mites coming that should totally eradicate any issues that I have. Uh, I can put some in here. I'll put some in my three by three just as preventative measures and uh, I'll probably even put some on the outside plant because I have quite a few coming. I think I have more than I need, but that's that's good. I want to get rid of these things once and for all. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I was going to do a major cleanup today, but I think I am going to wait. Like I said, those the predator might should be in today or tomorrow at the latest. So what I'm going to do is I want to introduce them on the plant and let them do their thing for a few days. Uh, make sure we can wipe out everything here and then after that we're going to do a defoliation so i'll be doing the defoliation in a few days and we'll see it next week but uh, we definitely need to get this cleaned out now as you can see we we did lollipop here earlier before we flipped it to flower but uh, there is still quite a bit in here that uh, I really just want to clean out so we can let some of that light and the airflow down through there but even with the mite problem uh, we got some really nice, nice big buds coming here. And I think we're going to get a really decent yield out of this 4x4 four four area. Now we let this veg 13 weeks or so, which is almost double what I would normally, normally around 7 weeks I would flip. Uh, but we decided to let this one go, see how big of a plant we could get. It didn't get as tall as I thought it would. It didn't stretch as much. But uh, bud production seems to be on point. Now I have the... Uh, the Mars Hydro Smart FC 6500. Right now I have it just down on 25% because I'm in here doing the video, fans are off and it's really hot. But normally I have that up at around 60, 65% and uh, that's at, I would say probably almost two feet, 20, 20 inches or so uh, above the canopy at 65%. Seems to be working quite well. And I have the side light here, I have the the 4800, I have that on at about 50%, and that's about a foot away from the side right there to the light. So we're getting about a foot, foot and a half coverage there, and it seems to be working well. Now, speaking of the Mars Hydro Smart FC 6500, I went on Mars Hydro's site today. I think this is for one more day through the uh, prime sale that they're having right now, and you can get this light for 150 bucks off. So if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to check them out. They have uh, the prime sale is going on till the 26th. And I think next week the feature will be the FC 4800. So if you're interested in any of their products, uh, head over there during the prime month sale and uh, check them out for sure. And use my code BWARD 
to get yourself a little extra at checkout. All right, guys, so that's it for this one. Uh, I will be filming again tonight or tomorrow whenever those uh, predator mites get here. And uh, we will see that next week. We'll also check out the other plants and uh, we'll be doing a cleanup on this plant at that point as well because it really does need it. I can't put that off any longer. So uh, be sure to come back and check that out. Uh, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you on the next one. Happy growing.